Hi, Nikki Schauder here from Permaculture Gardens at GrowMyOwnFood.com. And today I wanted to talk to you about gardening year round, five tips for growing food in all four seasons. A few years ago, my husband Dave had an experiment where he wanted to see if he could keep on growing through the winter. And so he did. He continued to grow in ground, but covered the ground with hoops of plastic row covers. And we had a ginormous snowstorm of about 12 to 20 inches of snow. And you could see from the picture in this blog that the row cover was deformed, but lo and behold, inside it, where we were growing our trays or seedlings and where our, our little seedlings in ground were, they had survived and they were actually insulated by the snow for that week because like an igloo, it actually covered them, it, it, it served as protection. And so this recording is to tell you all that it is possible to garden year round. And you may not think of it at first, but you can have fresh, healthy produce even through the winter. Now there are several ways to extend the season and keep your garden productive with hardy leafy greens and root crops surviving the chilly weather. And three of these are one, using low tunnels like we did to extend your season, and we'll show you how. Two, protecting your winter plants um, by means of other, other cold, hardy protection um, techniques. And three, selecting the right cool weather crops to grow. So let's go, it, go to it. First, using low tunnels to extend your season. In the late 19th century, early 20th century, Parisian market gardeners continued to grow throughout the winter to keep the tables in France stocked with fresh produce. Without reliance on petroleum-based technology to fuel the growth, the French instead relied on green manures and animal manures to keep their crops warm during the winter. Horse manure, for instance, allowed them to continually fertilize their small plots for maximum efficiency. The gardens may be gone now, but you can still see the markets when you travel in France. We have lost many of these techniques and tips for growing crops in the winter conditions, but fortunately, a man named Elliot Coleman, who was a market gardener up in the north in Harborside, Maine, where it's very cold, revived these organic farming methods in the 1990s. And since then, he has advocated for four season growing and has inspired and motivated growers to extend their growing seasons. His books, specifically the Winter Harvest Handbook and Four Season Harvest, are great resources for those wishing to garden year round. So after careful observation and experimentation, Elliot noticed that the many winter vegetables that he were, was growing that were more, sen were more sensitive to temperature changes rather than seasonal reduction or the sun's light. So by focusing on low cost methods to raise the soil and air temperatures, he was able to get two extra seasons of growing fall and winter and not just grow in the summer. After experimenting with so many solutions, he invented a two layer low tunnel hoop house solution. That is what we used. That's economical and easy to set up for your raised bed. So how do you do it? I'm going to explain how to do it, but I'm not going to be able to show you because the pictures on the that's accompanying this blog will show you that. You purchase aluminum electrical conduit and you uh, and that's very cheap. It's like three bucks for about 10 foot, one 10 foot. And that'll be the ribbing of your low tunnel. Now you'd need a bender tool to bend each conduit to this desired, desired arc. And there are links here as to where you can get those or you can bend them yourself. It won't be as nice and round. And then you, um, you put them as that ribbing in your garden bed and then you cover it with a breathable row cover to begin with. And as the season changes and gets colder, or if you're starting now in the winter and you want to see if you can, you can start like in the winter, I encourage all that experimentation, that experimental spirit, then you would have to start with two layers if you are growing in a cold climate and it's snowing outside and your heart, your ground is hard. See if that row covering will, um, 
raise the temperature of the soil in there before you can, of course, put your seed in it. Now, um, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this because I'm recording this in the winter and I'm thinking, well, if somebody watches in the winter, how are you going to use this information? If you, this is optimal, if you're in the fall or in the late spring and you're thinking about extending your season, this is optimal to use. But if you are in the dead of winter, you can still do this, set these up so that when your brassica transplants are ready to go out, you have a nice warm bed ready with a row cover to protect them, not only from the frost, but also from the bugs that love the brassica family. Um, as the weather cools, you'll add the row cover or knitted shade cover. As the weather um, rises, as the temperature rises during the summer, you will remove them. And um, you can use a, a greenhouse transparency film even to make it even more protected. Overall, this method can keep the temperature inside the low tunnel about six degrees warmer than the outside weather which in many cases is enough to keep hardy vegetables from receiving frost damage. So um, protecting your winter plants. Below is a list of other techniques that I was talking to. So now we're in part two. We've talked about low tunnels. We're going to talk about protecting your winter plants. One way to do this is by a cold frame, which is a structure, a small box that you build that's like a greenhouse, but it's tiny. And it has an opening like a greenhouse. It's like a mini greenhouse, but it's called a cold frame. And it has no bottom. You put that over the uh, over the soil and you flap the lid open and shut to vent it. Or you can use cloches. And there's another article I'm going to link to here that has for fall gardening protection that's DIY and cost effective. Another way is cloches that are, you know, I have a picture here that's fancy. You can use milk jugs and and walls of water, which is another product. Uh, I have never personally used them, but our gardener clients that do speak highly of them. So walls of water is another thing that you can go to. Third thing. So we've talked about protection. We've talked about low tunnels. Third and last mm, tip is to select the right cool weather crops. So as far as annual vegetables go, we're just talking about annual, annual vegetables here. Leafy green and root crops seem better to handle frost, toler ugh, frost temperatures below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And here's a good selection of these crops. So leafy greens, kale, lettuce, mosh, miner's lettuce, collards, ah, oh, super, super hardy, Brussels sprouts, tatsoi, Spinach. I put spinach here, but uh, spinach is not that hardy for me. Um, it has to be really well established. And then let's go to the legumes. So there are winter legumes, and these are great because they're nitrogen fixing. They feed the soil. They. Um, you always have to have something growing in the soil, even in the dead of winter. Uh, no, no soil left uncovered and if they die at least you were trying to grow something in that soil because that soil will be even more resilient the next year round and then you'll be able to grow something in them that'll survive the winter so winter legumes um one of the earliest legumes that you can sow when it's winter are fava beans and they like it cold and that's really rare to have beans that like it cold so take a note of that if you uh, don't already have that in your arsenal that was the only <laughs> legume that I put here initially. But now that I know a lot about cover crops, if you establish cover crops that are legumes earlier in the season, you will have crimson clover probably perennialize in certain states like California, even in zone seven. And that's not a bad thing. Um, yes, they may compete for the minerals in your in the bed, and you just have to watch that and smother them when they do or pull them out but they're not hard to pull out. In fact, they will always be giving, in fact, don't pull them out, just chop and drop them. They'll always be giving to your, um, to your, your garden bed. Root crops, parse, carrots, parsnips, beets, onions, and garlic. So you, I know somebody who's planted onions as late as January, even though onions, I'm sorry, garlic as late as January, even though garlic, we plant them in the fall, like, 
in the beginning part of the fall, so they get nice and big. And she still gets a harvest in the summer. Her soil must be really good. But uh, it's not optimal, but it can be done. And it can still, it can be done even better if your soil is good. So that is all to say, I've given you a little bit to think about for winter gardening, for growing year round. I'm encouraging you to keep on growing. <laughs> and that may sound crazy because a lot of stuff that we're doing here, yes, we're growing microgreens, but we're also seed starting. And if you're in zone three, four, five, okay, yes. Yeah, so maybe the only things you're starting right now in the dead of winter are onions. But that isn't to say you can't put a cold frame outside and see what might happen because Elliot Coleman and Nikki Jabour are year round gardeners and they have cold frames and cloches and hoop houses all around the properties and you can too. So that is the beauty of this is um, we don't just have to admire them. We can actually learn from them. So I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to uh, come on if you need inspiration and you need to know when you should be doing what. Come to our free monthly garden planning session, which we have each month. Link here, <laughs> link somewhere here around this video. And there are more links on the blog for your reference and more pictures. So I hope you enjoy this and happy growing through the winter.